On July 20, 1969, humanity achieved one of its greatest accomplishments, the moon landing. Or did we? For over 50 years now, this historic moment has been surrounded by debates and conspiracy theories. Today we'll examine the most popular myths about the Apollo Lunar Program and compare them with scientific facts. You'll learn why the flag waves in a vacuum, why stars aren't visible in photographs, and what evidence definitively confirms the reality of the landing. Hey space nerds, welcome to 404, Space Not Found. Today, I invite you on a fascinating journey through the myths and reality of one of the most significant events in human history. But before we start examining the evidence, let's honestly acknowledge, skepticism on this issue isn't accidental. In the midst of the Cold War, when the USA and USSR were competing for space supremacy, claims about landing on the moon did indeed seem too fantastical. Plus, 1969 technology appears primitive compared to modern smartphones. How could people reach the moon with computers weaker than a calculator? All these doubts are understandable and logical. But what do the facts say? Let's find out. Let's start with the most popular arguments from conspiracy theorists. And the first one is the famous waving flag. Look at the footage. The American flag is clearly waving in the wind. But there's no atmosphere on the moon, so the filming must have been done in a studio. Claim the skeptics. Let's break this down. The flag indeed doesn't hang vertically, but it's not waving either. The fact is, NASA specifically installed a horizontal rod at the top of the flag, so it would appear unfurled in the absence of wind. When astronauts planted the flagpole in the lunar soil and touched it, the flag did oscillate, but exclusively from mechanical impact, not from wind. In a vacuum, such oscillations last much longer than on Earth due to the absence of air resistance. In all photographs from the moon, there's a black sky without a single star. This is clearly studio filming. The second popular argument, but think logically, Try to photograph stars during the day on Earth. You won't succeed, even though the stars don't disappear anywhere. It's about camera settings. On the moon, the surface is brightly illuminated by the sun, 10 times brighter than sand in an Earth desert due to the absence of atmosphere. Cameras were set for bright lighting conditions, so the weak light from stars simply didn't register on film. This is basic photography physics. Shadows and photographs go in different directions, meaning studio lighting with multiple light sources was used. This argument ignores the peculiarities of the lunar landscape. The moon is covered with craters, hills, and irregularities. Plus, the lunar surface reflects light, creating additional illumination, an effect that photographers call fill light. When light falls on an uneven surface at different angles, shadows naturally point in different directions. This can be reproduced even on Earth by photographing on hilly terrain. The photographs are too professional for shooting in a spacesuit. Actually, out of the 5,000 plus photographs taken during the Apollo program, many are unsuccessful, blurry, overexposed, with cut off heads. We just see the best shots. Plus, cameras were mounted on the chest of the spacesuit. Astronauts underwent intensive photography training and automatic camera settings were optimized for lunar conditions. Astronauts couldn't have survived passing through the deadly Van Allen radiation belts that surround Earth. Another common argument. This myth stems from misunderstanding radiation levels and shielding. The Van Allen belts contain high-energy particles, but Apollo trajectories were designed to pass through the thinnest parts of these belts as quickly as possible. The total radiation dose astronauts received was equivalent to a few chest X-rays, well within safe limits. The aluminum hull of the spacecraft provided adequate shielding for the brief transit time. NASA extensively studied this issue during mission planning, and radiation badges worn by astronauts confirmed exposure levels were minimal. If radiation were truly lethal, how do satellites and space stations operate in these regions today? Now let's move on to evidence that definitively confirms the reality of lunar missions. First, and most substantial, 842 pounds of lunar samples brought back by six Apollo missions. These rocks have been studied by thousands of scientists from dozens of countries for over 50 years. 
Their composition, structure, and isotopic analysis unambiguously confirm extraterrestrial origin. Faking such samples in 1969 would have been technically impossible. The Soviet Union, America's main rival in the space race, received samples for independent analysis and confirmed their authenticity. If the landing had been fake, the USSR would have been the first to expose it. Second evidence, laser retroreflectors. Mirrors installed by Apollo 11, Apollo 14, and Apollo 15 crews are still working on the moon. Observatories worldwide regularly direct laser beams at them and measure the distance to the moon with centimeter precision. These experiments have been continuing for 50 years. In 2009, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, photographed all Apollo landing sites with high resolution. The images clearly show landing modules, astronaut footprints, equipment left behind, and even flags. Japan's Selene Probe and India's Chandrayaan. One have also confirmed the presence of human artifacts on the moon. Apollo mission radio communications were tracked not only by American stations, but also by observatories in Australia, Great Britain, and even radio amateurs worldwide. The signals came exactly from the moon's direction. This could be verified by triangulation. Moreover, Soviet automatic probes Luna photographed Apollo command modules taking off from the moon. The USSR had every technical capability to expose a fake, but instead congratulated the Americans on their success. Imagine the scale of conspiracy. Over 400,000 people worked on the Apollo program. Contractors, engineers, scientists, technicians, and no one spoke out in 50 years? This is statistically impossible. But most importantly, technically faking the footage would have been more difficult than actually flying to the moon. In 1969, computer graphics didn't exist. All special effects were done optically, creating 14 hours of perfect video with lunar gravity, parallel solar lighting, and thousands of coordinated details would have been an incredibly complex task. Director Stanley Kubrick, often named as the director of the lunar fake, used dozens of techniques to film space for 2001, a space odyssey, and still couldn't achieve the naturalness visible in Apollo footage. But if the evidence is so convincing, why are conspiracy theories still popular? The first reason is the proportionality effect. Our brain is wired so that grandiose events must have grandiose causes. The moon landing seems too incredible, so people look for more logical explanations, a government conspiracy, or Hollywood production. The second reason is distrust of authority. The Watergate scandal, the Vietnam War, secret CIA experiments. All this undermined Americans' trust in government right in the 70s, when the first theories about the lunar conspiracy appeared. The third reason is cognitive availability. It's much easier for an ordinary person to imagine a film set than the most complex rocket technology. We judge the probability of events by how easily we can imagine them. The 1978 film Capricorn One, about faking a Mars mission, played a huge role. Many perceived this fictional film as documentary exposure. The movie showed how easy it seemed to fake a space mission, creating a template for moon landing conspiracy theories. Social media and YouTube have amplified these theories exponentially. Algorithm-driven content creates echo chambers where people only see information confirming their existing beliefs. A single conspiracy video can reach millions, while scientific rebuttals remain in academic circles. The entertainment industry has also contributed. Movies like The Shining and Room 237 have spawned wild theories about Stanley Kubrick supposedly confessing to filming the moon landing. These interpretations ignore the fact that Kubrick himself struggled with realistic space scenes and would have found faking the Apollo footage impossible with 1960s technology. There's also an economic factor. Conspiracy theories sell books, generate clicks, and drive engagement. Some promoters have built entire careers on moon landing denial. When your livelihood depends on maintaining doubt, you're incentivized to dismiss any evidence, no matter how compelling. Once someone believes in a conspiracy, they interpret all new information through that lens. NASA releases new photos from the moon. They're just getting better at faking them. Scientists explain the physics. They're part of the cover-up. This psychological trap 
makes it nearly impossible to change minds with evidence alone. But what science says? Science isn't based on speculation and suspicion. The scientific method requires verifiable evidence, and we have plenty of such evidence. Physical samples studied by independent laboratories, technical artifacts still working today, modern photographs from orbit, consistent testimonies from multiple sources. The beauty of science is that it's self-correcting. If the moon landing were fake, the evidence would eventually emerge. Scientific fraud gets exposed. We've seen it happen with much smaller discoveries. But after 50 plus years of intense scrutiny from scientists worldwide, the evidence only grows stronger. Perhaps most importantly, focusing on conspiracy theories distracts us from real issues. Instead of debating whether humans reached the moon, we could discuss why we haven't returned, how to make space exploration more international, or how to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. The moon landing really happened. It was the greatest achievement of human engineering, international cooperation, and human courage. Six expeditions, 12 people on the moon's surface, hundreds of hours of scientific research. Conspiracy theories arise from misunderstanding technology, distrust of authority, and the desire to find simple answers to complex questions. But reality is often more amazing than any conspiracy. In 1969, humanity really reached the moon. And this should inspire us to new achievements, not make us doubt what has already been accomplished. What do you think about this evidence? Has your opinion changed? Write in the comments. And if this video was useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. There are many more interesting myth-busting videos about space ahead. See you in the next videos.